Radio and on 88 to 91 FM. BBC Radio 2. Hello and welcome to the weekly wonders of the Chris Evans Brecky Best Bits. This week, friend of the show, kitchen connoisseur and all-round Mr Nicest Spice Guy, Tom Kedgery, sorry, Kerridge, popped in to tell us about his new book and TV show, Tom Kerridge's Best Ever Dishes. Miranda Hart came into our what we call studio to try to bag herself an invite to David Walliam's house to tell us all about her current mammoth tour and discuss the Generation Game gossip. And talking of game shows, here's our Brucey bonus, an interview with Cameron Diaz and Jason Siegel about their latest flick. Best of all, we were serenaded with beautiful, beguiling music from the Pierces. Bon appétit! Here we go with the Friday Breakfast Show, live guests and all. Let's welcome our first guest to the breakfast table this morning. Uh, as one of the funniest women in the entire country, no pressure, uh, takes a break from preparing her latest stand-up show, Sip Hot Breeze with us, never has a one-woman wonder taken the comedy world by such a storm by stumbling onto our TV screens in the way that she has over the last few years. Please welcome our woman who we call Miranda Hart. Good morning, Miranda. Hello, Chris. How are you today? All right, how are you? I'm great. I love the leather look. Oh, thanks. Seriously, that's very cool. Oh, cheers. And will you be leather-clad when you revive the Generation Game to BBC One on Saturday nights? <laughs> I see what you've done there. <laughs> <laughs> the Generation Game, well, I, if... if what's the going on? We don't know what's, what's going, going on. Well, it's... Uh, I don't know how it all sort of turned into this thing, but I'm sort of, I'm thinking about it. Are you? Yes. So... So that's it, really. I mean, Because uh, last year I interviewed Bruce... Foresight. That's his name. His yes. <laughs> Bruce Foresight. I don't know why I paused. And um, we were talking about Generation Game. I was watching clips, and I think the BBC said, uh, you know, it was such a great show, we should think about it. So we've been sort of talking about it. So, um, But I've been busy with the, the tour and doing Call the Midwife and other things. So I'm just, um, maybe towards the end of the year, I'm going to have a, a think about whether it's something that could work now. It's Moore, really fun looking back at the clips, by Charlotte the way. Charlotte Moore, the head of BBC One, said she announced that you are going to host the New Generation game, and then you tweeted the same day, no, I'm not. And <laughs> I, I, know. I don't know, but because they are the two main participators or the two main protagonists in this piece. She yes. is the boss of BBC One, and she did say that, and then you are the person she's talking about, and you did say the other thing. And I said, no, I'm not. <laughs> no, I know, Well, I think maybe we just got overexcited <laughs> about the concept. Well, it would be brilliant, doing, wouldn't it? Shut that door again. Do you remember Larry Grayson? He was just genius. Oh, shut the front door. Shut the, No, not the front door. No, that's what my daughter that, says. So oh, that's, that's shut, nice. I love that expression. Yeah, yeah shut that door. Yeah. He was brilliant. No, it's a great, it's, it was a great format. I love watching it, so it's fun. I'm looking back at all the clips and just seeing whether it could be a thing. But I really it could. Don't of course, know, it could cause... with the right ideas and the right. Yeah. I mean, you know, great family viewing. You can make it clever. You can make it sophisticated. You could layer all the gags. You could do live hits at home. I'll help you out if you like. <laughs> <laughs> if you could produce it, that would be fabulous. No, I think it'd be brilliant. You'd be perfect for it. Of course, you would. Yeah. Oh, well, that's very. And kind. why the heck not? You know, and the, and the generation game is a bit like Bond. It's like who's your favorite Bond? Who's your favorite generation game host? Sure. Was it Bruce? Was it Larry Grayson? Was it Larry? Was it Jim Davidson? Was it Jim Davidson? Or was and it then Bruce again? Because he did it again. Did he come early back? Early notice, yeah. OK, and there were just the three, were there? Just the three, yeah. OK, did anybody else sneak in? Didn't you never so. know, do you? You never know. It's like the Beatles. There were seven Beatles, you know that? No, I didn't. This is there a were new seven fact Beatles. Well, there were, there were Fab Four. Yeah. And then there was, um, I think it was Jimmy Nickel, uh, played drums for Ringo when they were in Australia. Pete Best, of course. Right. And um, Sutcliffe. Yeah. Oh, yeah. well, there you go. That's the seventh. Graham Norton did the Generation Fame for a while. Now he's your friend, isn't oh, he? Oh yes, Graham. Well, I and I did actually. Oh, that was for Comic Relief. Generation. Get, oh, I don't know what Generation Fame was actually. Well, I think it was a take on the. Generation oh, okay. Fame. So that was Comic Relief, and me and David Williams were up against each other potting. Is that what you say for potting? Yes, of course. Potting. Yes, if you're potting. a potter, you pot one pot. Yeah, what one pot? And I made a vase. <laughs> and it was me and Patricia Hodge against David did you, did, and his mum. Did you fire it? I, no, because it was so appalling. You couldn't even. Oh, it was an attempt to It divorce. remained unfired. Yeah, it was Mother unfired. Earth in your hands it remained yeah. unfired. It basically just ended up a lump. See, here we go. Are you ready for this? Mm -hmm. Roy Castle hosted an episode of The Generation Game we just You're found out. You're 
time for this yes. gen game fact. No, well, we're only just finding this out now. But I love it's, it. It's always interesting, isn't it? So you could. You, the, why don't you do a pile episode? The history of the generation game, or the generation game then and now, or N- nice. You're just a sort of one-off celebration of well, the generation you get, game. You get see how it goes. No yeah, commitment. Yeah, yeah. you're yeah. going to produce this one as well. <laughs> I, am, I, I, I already am in my head. <laughs> you you see, uh, the conveyor belt game. Uh, that, that's going to be the favourite. The cuddly toy the coming cuddly back. Toy, but yeah. you're not really here to talk about that, are you? No, not really, because I don't know if I'm doing it. <laughs> it's just, yeah. Miranda's but, here to talk about something else entirely. Yeah, well, I'm doing my I'm doing uh, my final week of my stand-up tour. But I did six weeks earlier this year, and I'm doing a week in October. Oh, it's yeah. already happened. Yeah, I the did. The majority of it. The majority of it. And then um, I went away and uh, I did a film, which was very exciting. A movie? A movie. Oh, my goodness I me. I know. What, this side of the pond or in America? Um, we actually filmed it in Budapest, but it's an American for, by the director Paul Feig, who did Bridesmaids and The Heat. Listen yeah. to you making movies. So that's why the whole Generation Game thing was a bit, uh, because I'm sort of focusing on yeah, the acting. I'm a movie star now. Well, n- not so much that. <laughs> <laughs> Just well, doing a little bit of acting, you that's could what well, I would say. All right, well, no wonder you're looking so relaxed. I didn't realise you'd, you'd achieved the majority of your tour. Yes. I thought you'd come in here like a, a you know, quaking, shaking bag of nerves, but no. Well, I still am a bit of that. Are you? It was quite a thing. It was scary. The name's Evans. Chris. Evans. Miranda knows James Blunt. How well do you know James Blunt? Oh, is he personally? You said to me off, Edward, I thought you meant musically. Oh, uh, no, we all know it musically. No, but here's a showbiz fact for you. Go on. Uh, I was at university with James Blunt. There you go, so you yeah. know him really well. And I, uh, not re- Yeah, well, I wasn't... Not really well, but yes, I do know James a bit. And from uh, the part... We, I remember him strumming away in uh, his um, flat in Bristol. So did you go to his flat? Yes, once had there a party at this flat. Yeah, See, student yeah. parties. They were fun. Weren't they, they were fun. You can't rec- you can't buy those days back, yeah. can you? But no, che- no checks buying that day back. No, then. exactly. Oh. But I remember going. Oh, this is quite good. And I was going. Oh, no, it's so embarrassing. He's getting his guitar out again. Someone's got to tell him. <laughs> you know that whole kind of. Well, there's always one trying to put make they music. Didn't tell him. Better, and look, so. it's brilliant. Yes. Good on him. What were you doing then? Were you getting your jokes out? I was uh, trying. Uh, supposedly in vertical commas, doing a politics degree. But basically lying about watching, um, oh, what was the, oh, go, oh going for gold. Going Do you for talking gold. of game shows? Do you remember yes, going for gold? Going for gold. I basically just watched that. Had a bit of a meltdown. <laughs> Wasn't Supermarket Sweep around at that supermarket time? Supermarket well? Sweep, yeah. Dale, we love Dale. <laughs> um, I do love him. Yeah, so that's basically what I did, right. and then tried to write some comedy. So, Miranda Hart, uh, she's uh, almost finished her UK tour. Now, this was... I remember talking about this to you before, when you when you were embarking upon it, and you hadn't even written it. And yeah. it, it seems so ambitious from a number of dates' point of view in the venues you played, but it all went well, did it? Yeah, it went... Oh, it feels like a bit of a blur. I don't remember much of it. I think I was that nervous. Because you can't really prepare for these arenas that us comedians are now sort of able to do it's it's strange so you can't prepare for it so suddenly you sort of do a sound check at the OT and think what no really people are going to be in this <laughs> it's very big it's isn't terrifying. it it's terrifying yeah. it's big and you kind of don't understand your level of interest I find the attention kind of slightly embarrassing and <laughs> weird I don't sort of enjoy that so it's not really very me and I find it quite nerve wracking but I'm thrilled to have done it and I'm glad I've got this other chance to do a, a final week to kind of enjoy it more and really celebrate so the show. How, how were you? Were you any good? I was marvellous. No, but what, you serious, what did you um, think of your, how, you, how you did? I don't, I, gosh, I don't know. I've, I, I haven't thought about that. That's a good question. I think I did all right, yeah. I think I gave enough energy and sustained the energy and I, got, I don't remember ever feeling like I'm losing the audience. And was it, was it stand-up? Was it monologues? Yeah, it was stand-up. It? Really? Yeah, it was pure stand-up, basically. OK, which you've done before. Yeah, but it's the last time was sort of seven years ago in a 50-seater pub, so it was quite a leap. Because I remember talking to comedians about, about you doing this after yeah. you'd been on the show, and every, a lot of comedians, well, no comedians are saying, well, you know, we, we wish, wish her all the best, but we're not sure it's, it's going it's gonna <laughs> to yeah. work, but you pulled it off, so congratulations. Yeah, well, the, 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 the Miranda sitcom character kind of came from stand-up and sketches, in a way. Like, that was my sort of on-stage persona at the Edinburgh Festival and stuff, and when I did started doing stand-up. So it's sort of that character doing stand-up. So I used to talk about a mother that said such fun and... You know, so it that it all came from that. So it didn't feel too much of a leap for me. OK, yeah. pe- people can still see this tour de force because it's going to happen again, isn't it? Yes, it's going to happen from the 9th of October. 9th and 10th, I'm in Wembley. 
and then um, I think Birmingham, Nottingham, Cardiff, and then the 19th of October is the O2. And you have one of these books out for Christmas called The Best of Miranda. This is, I think it's being published on Super Tuesday on the 23rd of October when all the big books come out. And I know no. you've done one of these before, uh, but that's not, not a best of. But the best of is, is quite handy for the author because you don't have to do anything, do you? No, I wrote some introductions to each script. Well done. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> but the rest is cut and paste. I mean, it's funny cut and paste and it's good, it's, you know. Yeah, it was, it was lovely to be the publisher said, why don't we collate some of the... Done. Script? And I said, what a lovely idea. All right, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> yeah. And whilst on tour, I know that uh, various actors and various uh, touring thess or touring performers do different things to fill in those those um, those quiet hours, those dead hours in between performances when you just wait. It's like waiting to see the headmaster. You're just waiting yeah. to perform. Waiting to not get it wrong is what you're doing <laughs> yeah. all day. Uh, how did you fill those hours? Tom uh, Courtney f- famously tries to learn a new skill every time he goes on tour. Does he? It's like playing the saxophone or something like that, which he does do. So I, sh- I, I achieved nothing like that. I ended up... So when your body clock goes, out, so I ended up sort of waking up about noon every day, which like a rock star. <laughs> like, yeah, I basically did feel like a pop star. Uh, that's very much like the mindset that I got in. Uh, that was fun. Uh, what did I do? I uh, do you know I got fit? That's what I did. Because you're staying in hotels which have gyms, so I started going on cross trainers. Bit of that. Bit of that. Any books on tour? Uh, any books? Yeah. A oh, reading book. A reading list, yeah. Uh, I'd look forward to that. I'd really love that. I think, oh, I'm going to read all this. Gonna re- yeah, weirdly, the time sort of goes. Yeah, I didn't read much. No? No. Do you have a tour bus? A tour car. Tour, oh, no, not a tour car. I know. Peter Kay has a tour bus. Well, yeah, but that's... You know, those guys are in a sort of different league. Yeah, he's plays like 57... Tours. He also has a tour helicopter, which he doesn't like to talk about. <laughs> Does he really? Yes, he has well, a tour... Well, I'm terrified of helicopters. He has a tour jet as well that he also doesn't like to talk about. He will not <laughs> he thank will me for this. He will not have a tour at- jet. Are you serious? Yes, he has a tour jet, but he really does like well, to talk about Well, I mean, no one's listening, it's fine. <laughs> Good morning, Britain, and welcome to another day on planet Earth. Miranda, our next guest, please, if you don't mind. Yes, Chris, wafting into the studio like a gorgeous smell from the kitchen. <laughs> it is now famous two Michelin star pub. <laughs> that was amazing. And fresh from cooking up a cracking TV series all about what he reckons are the best ever dishes, please welcome Super Chef, who's quite literally half the man he used to be, it's Mr Tom <laughs> Kedridge. Good morning, Tom. Good morning. Thank you very much. Kedridge, 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 Kedridge. doesn't really same matter. Thing, same thing. Bon Kedridge. Yeah. <laughs> Good morning, Thomas. <laughs> Good morning. So he brings gifts, Louise. He brings oh, gifts. It's a promising Miranda. looking box. He brings gifts. Look at it is a gift. Look at the size of this box. Feel the weight of this box, Miranda. It's, no, it's, it's all weighty, the, it's, it's, it's like anything that comes with the post. It's all about the packaging. Now, last um, cheaper to bring it than post it, I would imagine. Uh, yes, judging from the weight. <laughs> now, last Thursday we celebrated TFI Pie Day here on the show. We You're did. very much involved in that yourself. Yeah. Uh, drum roll, this no idea what it is, girls. Are we ready? Okay. Ready. All right. Can you open it up? Okay. What do we have? Oh. oh it's oh, oh, It is a cherry and chocolate custard pie. Oh, oh my goodness. Custard pie. <laughs> Not easy. We were talking about custard pies uh, because, of course, they start on the Bake Off, didn't they, on Wednesday night? Yep. Uh, what can go wrong with a custard pie? Lots. Lots and lots and <laughs> lots. Every, everything. It involves. There's something that you. Well, this one, there's fruit, pastry, and custard in it. It's a combination. And to be honest with you, because oh, we haven't cut that. into this, we don't even know what this one is like. You're so. in charge, Miranda. Miranda, you, you can do the honours and see if it's actually worked. It's got that's the BBC my, on it as well. Yeah, it's got the BBC logo put on the top. That's my highly skilled pastry chef that was briefly on last week, who since his appearance on the show we've fired. Good time. Because um, <laughs> <laughs> he was rubbish. Yeah. <laughs> but he is now, Jolly and Danji Bo is his name, and he's now made this amazing pie with a BBC logo on the top. All right, we're going to talk to Tom in the next half an hour. have got live music from the Pierces. Happy Friday, everyone. Tom is currently having his, having his photograph taken with a movie star. Yeah. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Miranda, hi, it's Tom Cage. And also our next guest about to play live for us. Tom, over to you. OK, providing the superb soundtrack for our breakfast bonanza this morning are two singing siblings who will make you tap those toes. Please welcome Alison and Catherine, the Pierces. Alison and Catherine, the Pierces. <laughs> 
Good morning, ladies. Good morning. Is it Alison on my left and, and Catherine on my the other right? Way around. Oh, see, can you be like Anton Deck and stand in order, please? <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard Sorry. of Anton Deck? Do you know who they no. are? No, no, no. They're, they're fading. Their stars are, are fading fast. <laughs> All right, what are you going to play for us first? We are going to play Creation. Oh, I love Creation. Off you go then. Life is like a loaded gun pointed at the lonely ones. Will the final bullet be enough? You're the creation, you're the reason, you're the rising sun and the colors in my mind. You're the changing of the seasons, you're the growing old and the passing of the time. You live, you learn, you laugh. Beautiful, the Pierces. Thank you. Uh, more from the Pierces in a moment or two. Uh, currently, we're with Miranda Hart and Tom Coach. Now, how about this? Did you know this, you two? Cameron Diaz and Jason Siegel were bumped for you two. No what? What? Way. What? They were due on this show, but we thought you two were going to be so good. We thought you were going to be so good. <laughs> um, we bumped them from the show. We're way better it. looking. Well, I was just about to say, if you want a beauty, here we are. And you're probably more couple material than they are, which is unfortunate because they're starring in this new movie where they're a couple together. Have you, have you heard about their new movie? I, I've seen the posters. I've known I know. I know no so more you know that. the title of the film, then, I do. Which I have to spell. You know the kiddie spell thing, so the kids don't know what you're talking oh, about? Oh, right, yes. It's S E X T A P E. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've, seen, I've seen the posters too. Have you yeah. seen the, oh, we've, oh, we've all seen the posters. <laughs> oh, you just say it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so, Tom, your book. Here we go. Uh, let's talk uh, Tom's book and new series. Tom Cage's Best Ever Dishes. Now, Tom. Yeah. What are you doing here? Are you thinking long term? Because if these if these are your best ever dishes, frankly, after this, your career's over. Yeah, I, I, I think that was a small oversight when I was putting <laughs> it together. It's a, they're the best ever dishes so far, part one. <laughs> so far. You've got, is it too late for that in brackets yeah, now? No, I'm just going to go around every bookshop and stick a little post-it note on the front saying, so far. <laughs> and you must, sign, you must sign all your books. You know what they say, publishers? You know what they say in the publishing world? Yeah. A signed copy is a sold copy. But don't worry, nice. I've been signing loads. The publishers have been telling <laughs> nice. me i got arm ache. <laughs> OK, some great dishes. In here. Seaside stuffed mackerel. Who doesn't want a bit of that? Nice knot work there as well. Yeah, a little bit of tie in. It's very, uh, it's a, it shows my OCD that they're all in exactly the same space. The knots are the same part, the same part together, and it's a. Uh... Yeah, it's a little bit OCD, but it's a beautiful dish. How do you do that dish, in a nutshell? It, uh, you take two fillets of mackerel oh. and you stuff the middle of it with bread and mm. kind of like seaside vegetables, a little bit of horseradish, put them together and tie them and then put them on a barbecue or fry them in a pan and they are lush. Lots of people are very frightened of, um, of, of fish and frying pans in their own homes for loads of reasons. I mean, yeah. the, the lingering odour is, is one, but just getting it right or wrong or overcooking <laughs> and undercooking. Do you have any fail-safe tips for that? Yeah, I, actually, mackerel's very good at that because it's got quite high in omega oils it stays quite moist so actually even if you do overcook mm. it and you stuffed it with something like that it's not going to go all dry and mm. pappy so it's white it's flat fish that if you mm. overcook goes really like cotton wool mackerel always mm. works <laughs> mm. stays moist stays moist guaranteed <laughs> what about ultimate pigs in blankets not pigs in blankets ultimate yeah, it's Tell got, us about the ultimate well, aspect of the title. One. Yes. Yeah, ultimate part <laughs> one. Best ever pigs in blankets part one. one. It's, uh, it's got black pudding in it. So we kind of make a oh. black pudding mousse and sausage wrapped in black pudding, then wrapped in bacon, and then cooked in like a Cumberland sauce, which is like a kind of a, a fruity, orangey, beautiful English sauce. It's absolutely wow. delicious. It's perfect for Christmas. Oh, I'm hung, so hungry now. It's aren't so you? Hungry. <laughs> we've got a pie we can crack uh, on with. We have got a pie, yeah. and also we've got something else as well, which I'll bring in oh. in a moment, or ask to be brought in in a moment. Uh, Paul schnitzel here, uh, page 168. Pork schnitzel with executive fried duck eggs. Yeah. Tell us about the executive so, aspect so of So an title. executive egg, that kind Ooh. of actually came from working in a kitchen where oh. we, we, we did an egg and then you kind of, when you crack it into the pan yes. and then you put like, I don't know, it could be a bit of black pudding, a bit of chorizo, a oh. bit of whatever else into the white and it, you slowly cook it so it's set in the egg. So we didn't quite know what to call it in a restaurant because... It hasn't really got a name, so executive made it sound like really posh. So it's like an executive fried egg, so you could just put loads of extra stuff in it, that makes it executive. OK, you've never looked better, you've never looked fitter or leaner, uh, since you were seven, perhaps. Yeah. Uh, this is because you famously <laughs> stopped drinking, and you've shed a load of... How many stones have you shed I, I'm, I'm nearly nearly done ten stone. OK, so for our wow. North American friends, a round of applause. Yeah, yeah. amazing. <laughs> for our North American friends, what's that in pounds? Ten's easy, so it's, a, it's it, 140 pounds, isn't it? I, it's, I have absolutely no 
no idea. Yeah, it's it's about pounds, so. seven barrels of real ale, I think that's what it is. <laughs> Girls, he used to be £140 bigger than he is. I mean, there was more to love, but now... Yeah, you look great. You can get closer. Thanks. I'm still not skinny, girls, but but we're getting there. You don't want to lose too much, though, do you? No, no, no. Oh, God, no. no what, what's no. your target? Oh, it's a, I don't really know, actually. I'm just... I'm quite enjoying just doing what I'm doing. It's been the best diet ever, because actually, all I've done is knock beer on the head and a few potatoes and just eat loads of meat. It's ace. Really? Yeah. OK, now, Miranda, uh, you have been looking after yourself because you've been on tour. Being yes. on tour helps, doesn't it? Yes. Uh, not only because you go to these hotels that have and you've got nothing to do, so you while away the hours in the gymnasium and yes. the sauna, but being being on tour, how do you feel? How, how do you feel? Yeah, I feel so much better. OK. And I have something now called a core strength. Which is apparently vital. Core. Cool. A, a core strength. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I just feel toned and kind of more... Like, yeah, you just got that energy. Yeah, I feel better. All so right, I'm keeping go- are you going to keep up of, this regime? Yeah, I've got a bit... Uh, I've got a stone to go to get back to my original weight. So well, your fighting really, weight. My, my fighting weight. OK, what, yeah. what is that? Do you, do you mind sharing that with us? You don't have to, by the way. Well, well... Uh, well <laughs> <Can> you, no. <laughs> That's why I, I said nearly, you don't have to. I nearly did. And I thought, no, I'm not going to do that. I don't that. want to make you feel uncomfortable. But anyway, you both look great. Thanks, Chris. Da-da. Robert Plant's on The One Show tonight. He's one of our guests on The One Show tonight, 7 o'clock BBC One. But we've been asked not to talk about him as far as Led Zeppelin's concerned. He won't, you know, he won't, he won't walk off or anything like that, but he'd prefer not to, which I think is fair enough, you know? Yeah, it's fair enough. Yeah. We often get requests like that, some reasonable, some unreasonable. Um, Courtney Love was particularly unreasonable because uh, she asked me to sign a 360-page contract before interviewing her, so I told her where to go. No. 360-page contract. That's ridiculous. Yeah, an agreement. So, so I said, I told her where to go, so I said, go to any other chat show, but not this one, so she had to leave with her tail between her legs. I think. I can't remember. It was in the <laughs> 90s. Maybe it never happened. Let's go with that, then. OK. <laughs> anyway, here's the thing about Rob, here's the thing about Rob Platt. So he's on the one show. That they've asked us specifically not to talk about Led Zeppelin, but the one show producers have put together... You know the little films they have on the one show? Yeah. About the Zeppelin. Ah, how, how do we? How do we ignore that? Well, that's not... Yeah. That's not talking about it. Then just what? Well, and then you just have to not reference it. And that's yes. sort of a bit weird, yeah. Yeah, is it a trap? Mm. Yes. <laughs> Don't go there, They're Chris. I know. Your mighty skills. I think this is the way they're getting me out. This is it, isn't it? <laughs> this is, <laughs> Don't I'm trying do to tell it. Us something. Uh, so we have a birthday boy, Matt, who works on the show, magnificent Matt. He's 31 years old today, and he's baked a cake because it's his birthday, and people do that sometimes for their work colleagues. Oh. And uh, he's not only has he baked a cake, but he's baked it from one of Tom's recipes. Here's Matt. Happy birthday! Happy birthday, Matt! Hey. Come over here, Matt. So you're going to... This is very brave of you, by the way. It's is either it? brave or stupid or something in between. Thanks. Because Tom's here, isn't he? I know. That's Tom there. It's Tom Kedgeri over there. <laughs> Hi, Tom. <laughs> so um, so take, us, take us through what you did and how you did it, and let's see if the big man says it's OK. So it's a chocolate and ale cake. Yeah. Um, I went for a nice dark porter for Ooh, the ale. Good call. Yeah. Um, uh, follow the recipe completely by the book, and then at the end I decide to put a drop of brandy in the icing. Oh, whoa! Ooh. And what happened? It separated quite a lot and yeah, I panicked. Yeah. That's, why, I that's think... why the brandy isn't in the recipe. <laughs> yeah, I know! <laughs> oh, don't be cruel! I even know you're right! <laughs> but I think it survived. Yeah, well, we'll I, see. I, well, looking at it, since uh, last week's show and I sat my pastry chef, they, if you're looking for an opening, from visuals, that looks very, very good. It does oh. look very good. Oh, by the way, nice chopping board that you put this on. Where'd you get that from? It looks like half a tree. I, I have no idea, but it was in the cupboard. How can you not know where this comes from in your own house? It's huge. It's a shared house. It's not my job. It's a board. shared house. You live in a... Sh- oh, how cosmopolitan. <laughs> and uh, when, when you started to freestyle with the brandy, why, why did you feel the confidence to start pimping it up towards the end? Had, had, you, had you had some of the brandy before? I, I'd had half of the porter. So... It smells gorgeous, by it the way. Right, OK, so do we have a knife? Do we have some napkins? It's your birthday. You shouldn't be doing this. Thank you, Golden Graham. Why, why don't you check the rest of the show? It's your birthday, for heaven's sake. Sit down there. Oh, <laughs> hey. Sit down there. Hey, what, can we get you anything? Can I get you anything? I'm fine for now. Really? Yeah. He you like a cappuccino nervous. or something? <laughs> I can get you a cappuccino or something like that. No, we haven't got anything. In, we haven't planned anything. <laughs> Those days are over, to be honest. Well, hey, hang on, Mr. Bass Player. Don't have a sneaky bite before the rest oh. of us. Oh. Oh, he's, no. he's caked early. Who is this bass wow. player? <laughs> he's the most I'm rock so and roll. I had a sneaky bite too. <gasps> you had a sneaky bite? Oh, oh. oh. You invite rock and roll into your studio. <laughs> what happens? Rock and roll. They ruin Matt's big tasting moment. Okay, let's all dive in together. Okay. Uh, rock and roll has led the way, as it often does. Yeah. Let's dive in. Here we go. Mmm. 
Tom, what is this again exactly? Oh. It's a chocolate and ale cake with the added addition of mm. brandy in the glaze on the top, mm. which mm. I have to add, I think is a wonderful addition. Oh, Maybe oh, 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 done, birthday boy. Actually, my, one, of the, one of the publishers is in the room next to me. We might have to reissue that book with a change in the <laughs> recipe with brandy. How about a change to Matt? How about a change in the title of the book? Matt, Matt's marvelous recipe. <laughs> Let's do that. Just Matt, hand write yeah. it in, it's all right. Tom it's... thought he had it leaked, but then Matt thought again. Yeah, Matt, this is Ellen. Ellen worked for a publisher. Speak to Ellen afterwards. I can see mm. a recipe book coming. Matt, <laughs> can you do me a favour? Can you, can you sign this book for me, please? <laughs> Good morning, Britain, and welcome to another day here on Planet Earth. So, um, whose houses have you been to? First of all, Miranda, have you been to David Williams' house? Uh, do you know, I have, I'm a friend of David's, but I haven't been to his house. Invite me. What kind, what kind of friends that? What, what kind of yeah, friends that? Yeah, exactly. All right, have you been to Peter Kay's house? I haven't. OK. Michael McIntyre's house? No. Graham Norton's house? I get no invitations, and I know these well, you're people. A prop, you're a proper friend no. of Graham Norton's, aren't you? Well, I, I, not close. Oh, I mean, well, I, I really like... I would love to be. Be my friend, <laughs> Graham! Will somebody be my friend and invite me to the house? Have you been to Alan Carr's house? No. Jimmy Carr's house? I've been to Jimmy Carr's That's house. That's what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's been to Jimmy Carr's house. It's more of a hotel than a house, to be honest, isn't it? More of a hostel, really. <laughs> All right, so, Tom, have you been to James Martin's house? I have, yes. Have you been to Raymond Blanc's house? Uh, no. I have been to his restaurant, though. <laughs> yeah, but he doesn't live there, does he? No. OK. Have you been to Peter Kaufman's house? No. Have you been to Giorgio Locatelli's house? No. No, no. Nor me. No, no. I, um, I might, I'd like to go to Jimmy Carr's house, though. Can you take me? Yeah, it, sure. <laughs> yeah. 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 Just have to make a reservation. Just book yeah. in, you'll be fine. <laughs> you need to party your car, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> what about the Pierces? The Pierces, have you been to Farrell Williams' house? No. 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 Have I'd you like been to. to? Yeah, <laughs> sure. Have you, yeah. have you been to. Um, have you been to the President's house? No. no. I thought you. Aren't you one of those bands well, that he invites to play? The president there? of what? America. Oh, I'm just kidding. I've been to, <laughs> I've been to Elvis's Good house. Good joke for an American. What? I've been to... Oh. <laughs> oh. Americans can be funny. Uh, no, no. Some, some of them. you can be very funny. Because I have to break it to you, not all British people are funny. No, no. <gasps> By the way, no, we've got to say American no. comedy rules the world. You'd totally. agree with that, wouldn't you, Miranda? I absolutely would agree with that. I, I it doesn't prefer make it best, British but... com comedy. Do you? Oh, yeah. yeah, definitely. I like the, the dry wit. Bit of sarcasm. The a, a dry bit. <laughs> Miranda shows full of that. Full of the dry wit. <laughs> very understated, isn't it? <laughs> it's very understated. I've seen your show. I love it. Oh, do you Both think? of them. Oh. I don't know how many you have, but... Wait. 25. She rules the world. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've seen Call the Midwife, which oh, okay. I love. Oh, and then you. there was another show that was, I think, your name. Miranda. Yeah, Miranda, yeah. 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 Both of them are great. Thank you very much. You're welcome. The She's a movie star now. She's oh, really? Movie star. <laughs> <laughs> really? I mean, like, seriously, she's, the, she's at that point in the career where they just say yes. Yeah, Miranda walks in. <laughs> yeah. The answer's yes. What would you like to do? That you are really not, there, aren't really you? Really not. Well, you know, oh, come on, no. you are there. When Chummy left Call the Midwife, I had my suspicions about maybe you're making... Movies or oh right, well I, no, I've actually she's she's still around. Well, Probably. yeah, you came back, but you left for a minute. Oh, see, I did my I did my sitcom. <laughs> right, right, yeah, yeah. you really do. Watch. Yeah, and is but the, no, that I'm I not. Do. I love it. I'm knocking on acting doors a bit. Actually. Has there been any talk of uh, Call the Midwife American version like The Office was? There well, must it's have on been. In, it's on over there. Your show's on over there, but are they going to no, remake? No, my it? show's and uh, Midwife is. That's, that's what I mean. Oh, but sorry. You, you in the in your, the British version? So, yes. But are they going to Americanise it? So oh, I see. I don't know. I don't. They're going to Americanise Call the Midwife. Well, they they. You do it. You do it to our shows, and we do it to your shows. It's okay. I mean, nobody right. really minds. <laughs> the kind of the point of that show is that it's in. Yeah, I think East the, the, the Englishness the war, of it, and the, the because it was true, based on true story of East End right. at that time. I think, yeah. Okay. Questions from our guests too. I guess so. First of all, how about the Pierces ask uh, Miranda a question? Thank oh, you. alrighty. I've got one for you. Okay. Okay. If I'm in a party and I need a, a surefire joke. Yeah. <laughs> do, you have, <laughs> do you have one? I, I, oh, gosh. I don't... Do you know, the thing is, I don't know any jokes. I know, I don't I know, either. I don't know one-line jokes, but then I think it would be really weird to go up to someone and go, hey, do you know the one about... <laughs> <laughs> That's no in. I think you're coming about it at the wrong angle. OK, okay. new yeah. question. Yeah. Yeah. New question. <laughs> Thank you. Good, it's like good it. Swerving. Yeah, good swerving all round, yeah. Have you ever... Um, yes, probably. <laughs> have you ever witnessed an actual birth? Uh, oh, good question. No, no, I haven't. Yeah. 
no, I haven't. Um, but I have had people asking if um, I would be on their be on their birth plan. Should, oh. should <laughs> they be imminent? I have declined at every. Have you had the turn. chance to witness a real birth? No, I haven't. No, I, I am nervous about if I see a very heavily pregnant person in the street. Thinking, <laughs> if I'm close to them and they go into labour now, somebody will ask me if I can help. But you must have picked up a few hints, handy hints. Yeah, well, although it is set in 1959, <laughs> so very much it, tips of that era of nursing. You know to bring the gas. Which, uh, yeah, the, the gas and air. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, I could do that. Um, so I could go, everything will be tickety-boo, and that might help. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it would help a bit. Boil <laughs> <laughs> the water. There you go, old yeah. thing, all will be well. Well, yeah. well. Great yeah. question. Don't they always say to boil water? Why do they boil water? Boil, boil water yeah. for to do things with. What, <laughs> I, think, I, think the, I think the myth is basically, I, I, maybe this is right, but put me right or wrong here. Um, Miranda, I think that when people are panicking, the nurse always says, go and boil some water and bring some towels, which means basically get out of the right. way. Okay, yeah. right. So you're giving something to do. Giving something to do. I think that's it. Well, although things. in this time, ta- this... Well, when they were doing, you did have to put towels down and f- to deliver the baby. That was it. That was, okay. you know, and sterilising with boiling yeah, water. Yeah, I mean, That was basically. That's when you doing. need a good party joke. <laughs> <laughs> Next question, please. <laughs> yeah. Miranda to Tom, please. Uh, 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 answer me this, please. Okay, Tom. <laughs> if you had to eat one meal for the rest of your life, what would it be? That is that's that's the easiest question ever. Oh, wow. that is All fish right. and Super chips. Da- oh, fish wow. and chips oh, really? every time. Yeah, 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 fish and chips. Right, but. It would have to be in a time machine and go back to Danny Dyke's fish and chip shop in, uh, which is in Gloucester, where I grew up as a right. childhood memory. Danny's oh. no longer there. He's, um, I think he's in the Algarve playing golf. Um, he did very well, right. but it was an amazing fish and chip shop. Every Saturday lunchtime, we'd have it there. Hence my wonderful figure. <laughs> is that is when they used to call you TK Funkmaster? Uh, no, where did you know that? Where did you just got a text saying we used to call TK Funkmaster at, uh, when he was a little boy? Yeah, that, uh, yeah, that was uh, that was when I was. Uh, 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 <laughs> help! Help! Can I ask a question now? Yeah, go on. <laughs> TK Funkmaster. Oh my Love god! It. See that, that? Yeah, that was back in the day. That was about fourteen years old when you had big. Buffy trainers and a baseball cap like the kids of the street do now. Do you know what? You're only a couple of shirts away from that now, I think. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Especially with retrogressing losing all your weight. I know. All right, your question to the Pierces, please, Tom. OK, the Pierces. So, uh, clearly the most rock and roll thing you've done on your tour bus is eat sugar. What is the second most rock and roll thing that's ever happened on your tour bus? Oh, wow. You can tell us about it. Yeah, we're not allowed to talk about it on morning Okay, then you can tell us about it. Does it get raucous, though? It It does. Well, it just gets really fun. You know, we were with these guys, and they're all really fun. Give you guys a mention, by the way. Go on. Oh, Oh, we've got got Max, we've got John Joe, we've got Chris, and we've got Farmer John on bass. Farmer Farmer John John on bass? (laughs) The guy who cakes early. All right, Farmer John. (laughs) How come you're Farmer John on bass? I don't know. Well, it's because know. after rehearsals, he would always bring a bag of vegetables, eating carrots. carrots and, yeah. and I asked, because we're from L.A., they said this was a normal question, do you grow those? <laughs> <laughs> and the answer is? And he no. goes, no! no. no. Just randomly no. bringing carrots and celery. Okay. Okay. Well, like to help you snack. <laughs> You're listening to the Chris Evans Breakfast Show. I love it. All right, there. Uh, thanks to Tom Kerry this morning. Tom's been here. Tom's new TV show, uh, Best Ever Dishes, is accompanied by a book, and that's all coming up on the run into Christmas. Miranda Hart's been here. My What I Call a Live Show uh, enjoys its extended run from the 9th of October through to the 19th of October. Uh, tickets available now, and the best of Miranda is out to buy. It's a book, and it's there for Christmas on the 23rd of October. And the Pierce have been with us this morning. And they've worked really hard, so extra applause for the Pierce. Uh, their brand new album creation is out now. What are you going to finish off with, girls? We're going to finish off with Crowded House's Weather With You. OK, Ooh. perfect. All right, thank you, Miranda. Thank you, Tom, for being here. Thank you. Everywhere you go, you always take the weather with you. Everywhere you go, you always take the weather. Everywhere you go, you always take the weather with you. If you're listening to this on Radio 2, I don't know why. 
You are a lot of wallies. So, Master Siegel and Ms Diaz, good morning to you both. Good Good morning. morning, How can I even look you both in the eye when I watch what I watched yesterday for two hours? Yeah. For heaven's sake. How is the experience for you now? I'm just about recovering. My my wife Mm. said to me when I got home last night, did you do anything interesting today? I said, no, no, nothing at yeah. all. Nothing. How was the Cameron Diaz, uh, Jason Segel film? It was fine. Yeah. It was fine. I, didn't really, I didn't really want to broach the subject because we'd been married for seven years. Uh-huh. We have right. two small children. Yeah. Right. Guess how their film starts, everyone. Now, yeah. how do we begin to talk about a film like this on what is undoubtedly the most listened to, most wholesome radio breakfast show on the BBC? Over to you guys, because I don't even I don't even know whether we can say the title of your film. Sure. Well, I think you started well. It's a moment in a relationship people are really familiar with, where you've been married for a while, mm-hmm. and you have a couple kids, and there's a question of how do you keep the romantic spark alive in a relationship? Oh, that's a good way of putting yeah, it. Yeah, I'm yeah, super good absolutely. at this, man. Now, the film's not called <laughs> Romantic Sparkle, though, is it? It is not. It is not. <laughs> it is not. But what it really is about is about a couple who's trying to keep the romance alive in their relationship, and then this it goes horribly awry, mm-hmm. and it's one night of them trying to retrieve this thing that they've made but I think the way you started in describing your own relationship is really like what the basis of the movie is this moment that I think we see all around us where no one prepares you for the fact that life gets in the way now it's referred to as show business sure. let's focus on the business yes. aspect of that with Cameron because you've really sort of kept the budget down here from a clothes point of view this, this... <laughs> I have one outfit for the entire movie actually I have two outfits <laughs> now the roller skating outfit that's yes. an interesting part of the film um, just go and see the movie for that one scene alone <laughs> and that's all that you really need and you talk about couples and you talk about um, them getting to particular aspects of the relationship and particular periods within their relationship Jason yeah. and what's fascinating about this film as I find about most good films featuring people who are quite good at what they do is that you're not married no. you've never been married mm. you don't even have a girlfriend from mm. what i hear cameron you've not been married you don't have children <laughs> how come you can both carry this off so well i know you're actors i know it's what you do for a living but it's really annoying for those of us who are actually doing it in real life who can't do it as well as you seem to be able <laughs> wow, to thank you i found out, i was surprised when i found out tom hanks had never been to space after <laughs> yeah, apollo yeah. 13 <laughs> <laughs> it blew my mind no, i know you're I an was... actor <laughs> i get it's it not, i think it's a universal thing i mean We've all been in relationships, and a lot of my friends around me, and I'm 34 years old now, and so some of my friends have been married 10 years at this point, and it's something that I think that men talk about it with their male friends, and women talk about it with their female friends, and so this is uh, maybe a movie that will make people talk about it with each other. Uh, As a couple, uh, you seem to get on so well in the movie. Mm. I've been watching lots of your interviews in preparation for this one, believe it or not. Wow. And um, and you are evolving into adopting some of the idiosyncrasies of a couple. You're finishing each other's sentences off, you're holding hands, there's decent body language going on there. Yeah. We we spent a lot of time <laughs> yeah, talking we, about this movie together. Yeah. And making <laughs> and the making movie. The We're movie. We're in almost every scene together. Yeah. So for three months every day, 14 hours a day, we were <laughs> together and like trying to make each other laugh. Mm-hmm. And then kind of like those moments where you aren't talking, sitting next to each <laughs> other for an hour. <laughs> right. You know, we've, we've done it all. Exactly. Yeah. So, so when does this relationship end and will there be tears? I think that we'll always be very supportive of one another's mm. happiness, you know, even if we don't get to sit across from one another. You don't have to understand. I look you forward know. to sitting across from one another. I don't know. <laughs> you want to say it, just say it. You don't okay. want to see me after this. This is it. <laughs> I think you're See on a break. You I think you're officially Chris. on a break. See what you this, started. Yeah. This could be we it. were getting along just I know. fine. Yeah. I'm sorry. When, when, was your, when was your first big movie, Cameron? How old were you? I was. I turned 21 on the set of The Mask. 21. On the set? Happy birthday mm-hmm. on the set. What was that like, your birthday on the set? It was the amazing. Mask? Did they yeah. do anything special for you? We were working a night that night, actually. Mm. We were working in the park, and uh, mm. we just had like a little celebration. And so that was... 21 years ago. Yes, when Jason was 14 years old. Mm-hmm. So you were presumably watching this Cameron Diaz movie. Of course. Okay, now what was your plan? What was your strategy to get to her then from that point? Yeah. <laughs> no, it really writing. Writing Jason... has been the key for me for my entire for my entire career. And if you look back at the things I've written, I always end up uh, paired with a woman who is sort of beyond my reach. Right. <laughs> as, as though um, this is like a conceivable, like we're married or we've been in a long relationship. So that was always my strategy. It's very Write Woody it. Allen-esque of you, yeah, Absolutely. I absolutely. Albert Brooks. Yeah, those were my idols. Oh, we've got to talk about the Muppet movie. What was yeah. the first, uh, what was the first uh, work that you noticed Jason in, Cameron? Be honest about this now. Well, saving... Uh, Sarah Marshall and um, I Love You Man is one of my favorites. Was was Saving Sarah Marshall the prequel to Forgetting Sarah Marshall? (laughs) (laughs) 
Just because I'm, I don't look like a chump here. See, I wasn't going to do that. <laughs> What's that? What? Yeah, it's forgetting Sarah. Well, no, it's oh, God. <laughs> Saving Private Ryan. <laughs> yeah. You actually forgot forget Sarah Marshall. Yeah. Okay, the Muppet movie though. Yeah. We, we, we've got to mention that because it was full of heart. Could the, could the Muppet movie already be your Citizen Kane? The Muppet movie is something I'm really, really proud of. I have to say. I mean, I, I can't tell if you're choking, but I. No, I'm not joking. Yeah. No, I am not joking. Yeah, it might be. Like, it might be the it's thing amazing. that I... I mean, I hope to do many, many things that I'm very proud of. But the Muppet movie was a real passion project of mine. People thought I was crazy. I had just done Forgetting Sarah Marshall, which was the first thing I wrote that got made. So I had this little moment of writing juice. And I said, the next thing I want to do is the Muppet movie. And they weren't making a Muppet movie. I, like, went in there, said I wanted to write it. Um, I had Muppet posters on my walls, you know, since I was a kid. And so, like, my birthday moment was... The Muppets sang me happy birthday uh, on Hollywood Boulevard for the final scene, uh, the night of my oh, birthday on a night shoot. Amazing. And it was uh, truly a perfect moment. Sorry, Cameron, we've gone on to a Oh, I a love Muppet. the Muppets. Uh, Don't worry, I, mean, I grew up on the Muppets. They're just the best. I, I started watching the Muppets before. Jason did because I'm how much older than you? Because you're very old. <laughs> Six, seven, eight years old. I was too young for The Muppet Show. It was off the air by the time I was born. My mom had taped all of the episodes to That's show awesome. to me when I got old enough. Do you know the story about, about how The Muppets came about? You must know that, Jason. It, well, he, he, well, he was a guest on a talk show, on a regular talk show, right? The first Muppet was Ralph Malf, and he was designed uh-huh. by um, Jim Henson to sell things. He was in an ads. And then Jim went to see a guy called um, Bernie Brillstein. Yeah, sure. And he met Ber- Bernie Brillstein in a cafe. And Bernie Brillstein got him to write on the back of a piece of paper. I think it was on the back of the check. And he wrote down what he wanted to do. And Bernie and he made that happen. And that oh. piece of paper was in, was in Bernie's office. Oh, Brillstein. that's amazing. Uh, starring in the film, also, we have Rob Lowe. Yeah. Tell us, explain to us why Rob Lowe is in the movie, first of all, Jason. He comes in and he plays the head of a toy company who ends up being very different behind closed doors. And he blows so my mind. Amazing. Yeah. Okay, now this is a company who want to employ you as a blogger in your character, Cameron. That's yes. right. Think. A blogger as a new mom. Yes. Just talking about the challenges of life with children and uh, marriage. And uh, they want to bring her on. And this is one of the reasons why they need to get the uh, video back. And, of course, we don't want to uh, ruin the chances of me getting a fantastic job that can a help our family. family. Absolutely. So we have to job. appear as a wholesome yes. family. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, yes. you are doing on this wholesome family <laughs> radio show now. Uh, but, of course, this involves you um, ending up at Rob Lowe's house, not Rob Lowe's real house, uh, in which it's a very, it's an over through that house. <laughs> yes. Uh, but the lovely juxtaposition is the fact he's playing, I thought it was Napalm Death, then Metallica, but <laughs> yeah. it's actually yeah. Slayer. Yeah. Now, Slayer. Ha- have either of you been to Rob Lowe's real house is it as frou-frou as that and does he really play crash metal <laughs> i have not been to rob lowe's house but i've been invited and i look forward to going well, can yeah. you report back please i will i will okay. well i think that's about it anything else you both want to say about the movie we hope that it helps people sort of have the conversation that they may not be having i'm with still waiting to have mine by i know you gotta do it yeah. all right see so you're not even gonna go for your marriage <laughs> <laughs> she wins oh you gotta do it says the guy who has no idea what he's talking about <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. (laughs) This was a download from BBC Radio 2. Thank you, Chris, for another delightful daily download. If you want more audio entertainment, check out the Confessions podcast. Here it is, bbc.co.uk slash radio 2.